I got to be very careful because he, he's not for us. He's against us. Amen? Amen. And it reads, the thief does not come except to steal and, and to kill and, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, everybody quoted that. Raise your hand if you remember 10 and 10 throughout your life. Raise your hand. I mean, a lot of folks probably remember that because that's the, that's the one you're going to quote, John 10 and 10. You know what I'm saying? And so I asked myself, you know, how did I, as a pastor, uh, how did I get like this? How did I miss so much? How did I get off base? You know, what, how was I running around chasing, as old folks said, Chasing dead dogs, catching nothing but fleas. <laughs> Old folk had some saying, didn't they? I never knew what all that stuff meant, but it just sounded good, and then they had me quote. <laughs> chasing dead dogs, catching nothing but fleas. And I still don't probably really know what it means, but I know it ain't good. <laughs> you know how you just think, say stuff like, that's just something, you know, and I spent so much of my life trying to chase after stuff. And I'm like, how did this thief get my attention? Because he spoke my language. He, he, now, the only thing Jesus was doing, so I sometimes have to make sure, because we were in this debate with the pastors, and I said, now, I know I don't spend a lot of time going back to historical data, and because and I study this and I try to give you scripture to make you see. But at this time, the Israelites, I mean, uh, uh, going on, and you know, when they were going through the Old Testament and New Testament, the problem was when Jesus came and you couldn't see the typology in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and he was just telling you there are false prophets. There's folk are telling you that you can get there another way. You can get that. That's how Jim Jones came alive. So I want you to understand that there's still stuff today that you believe folk and you'll check. So I want to make sure I preference that I get all that stuff. But so how do you how do you know that Pastor Smith not a wolf in sheep clothing? And I tell you this all the time, try the Spirit by the Spirit, and I challenge you. That's why I give you all these scriptures, and I want you to go home, and if you struggle with something I say, read it. Trust me. Try the Spirit by the Spirit. I'm not afraid to say, I want you. I want to be what Paul said to you. Follow me as I also follow Christ. Because guess what he was saying? I'm a man made of clay feet, and I'm subject to slip up, cuss up, fuss up, act up, Angry up, come on, all this stuff that up. I, I'm something to do that, and you'll say that passes. No, the, but the one that I'm following can't slip up, Amen. can't cuss up, can't right. come on. Right. So I don't want you to ever get the credit and say, "Man, I'm doing it." Because sometimes I'm, I'm telling you, I can get like that. Amen? Amen. So I want you to catch it, your life, and I do want you to understand it is your life. And for years, I was just telling Cole, I said, man, I have struggled. And I want you to know this is such a personal call. I struggled with uh, contentment my whole life from a standpoint of, man, I just, as people say, Pat Shirley sure said all the time, but he was around me many a year. He said, man, your, your teacher span ain't, you know, <laughs> you, you, man, I got it. <laughs> and then the Lord and I was talking with and just laughing because the church would say it like this. they say, man, you might get two minutes. You might get five, but man, because his mind is everywhere. You know, you look in his eyes, he ain't paying no attention. So I have to, and I don't like that anymore. I have to really be careful to, to try to get people because I got a million things. I want you to understand this. And part of not being content and your life is full, you're going through stuff called, I'm trying to grab this and I'm trying to grab this. And that's how the thief comes in and pulls you away because you think you got to have it all. I thought free meant for me, Larry. If it's free, I'm going. Hey, if they put free on it, I'm there. <laughs> you don't have to buy all ten things. It says, <laughs> but I bought all at, at Kroger. You know, but all, but honey, then it's wasteful. Well, it said ten for ten. I'm buying all ten. <laughs> you know, I do all of it. And she'll say, you don't need all that. I said, well, honey, it was a good deal. <laughs> They was a dollar fifty. You know when they don't sell it's five dollars. So I'm gonna buy all ten of them for a dollar fifty and stock <laughs> stack them somewhere. <laughs> so I want you to catch that because I can say that and laugh myself. You think about this and how the contentment comes. This is real issue and how we feel and how we get to where we get. And sometimes you just ask yourself, 
What are you seeking after in this life? So Dr. Brooks, sometimes they say, what are you seeking after? You up every day, like me, and you're going through, what are you seeking after? And you got it, and it did not give you what you thought it was going to give you. You got everything. So God being so, so good. I mean, he's giving you more than you can. Come on. You know what you deserve. He didn't even do that. Come on. So I don't even say that. I just want what I deserve. Come if I wanted what I deserve, oh, Lord. If I got what I deserve, Sometimes I got to be careful with stuff that we say, amen? Because you can go through life and look at things like, man, what are you seeking, Pastor Smith, Donald Wayne Smith, Brother Smith? I'm just putting my name. You put your name. All your titles. What are you seeking that got you to where everything that God blessed you with still did not give you the contentment? Because there's got to be a reason how the thief can come in and destroy it. I want you to catch that because sometimes we just all play. It ain't going to happen to me. It ain't going to happen to me. And it happened to you. I'm one of those just like you. Play the lottery, win the lottery, make the money. I don't play it, but I'm just saying stuff like, man, if I can get this and do this and have this and get more and do this and do this and I got more and this happened and that happened and more troubles and more problems came with it. But that ain't going to happen to me. God, God, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to do the right thing. I ain't going to buy all these cars. I ain't going to buy all these homes. I ain't going to buy all these shoes and clothes. Lord, I'm not going to do like everybody else. And God blesses you and you do like everybody else. Else. So now maybe you walk with me. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill. Man, this is a strong word. And to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm not going to suck your tell you. That's that's plain. But why do we get caught in this web of life? It's really plain, so I just want to break a couple of things down for you. Because look, I struggle with this. To have an abundance. And brother, this messed me up because I try to teach you where when you go home, you're just not all excited. You, you're really looking at life. Contentment means satisfaction. And satisfaction means to have enough. What is enough? Well, I'm, I'm so tired of doing what we do, preaching, and everybody get excited. And you walk out, you're going to do the same thing. What is enough, people? Colette and I talk about this all the time, because she's always, she said, baby, you, you make your life so complicated. I just want to live a simple life. Let's just go, come on. But you got to do a production, and you got to do all this kind of stuff. Just slow down, and let's just walk around Harrisburg. We ain't got to drive to California. Let's just walk and hold hands. And hold hands. <laughs> Let's drive to California. <laughs> and sometimes just the simple, you think about how. And Larry, I was going through this today, and I was reading this how. How it was before all these seat belts, and you couldn't ride the back of the truck, and my grandparents would get in the old, old rusty red truck, and all the grandkids, and you might, and we get in the back, laugh, have a good time, and they riding all over the place. Slow ride. You couldn't have fell out and bust your head, cause you weren't going for two miles. Because they seeing everything. The simple life, just having a good time. I mean, just, and everybody back there, 15, 20. Right? But can I go? Can I go? Where are we going to say? Take me out. We're going to ride down to the farm and ride back. And that was some good stuff. Where are you going? I'm going down to my grandparents' house. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just sit there and look and see who comes in and goes out and talk about them and go on about my business. The simple life. How they, they sit on the porch. I don't build no porches no more. Nobody don't sit on no porch no more. The world gets crazy. The simple life. When, what is enough? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I had to give you, I just had to write. I was reading this. I said, whoa. Because God, he, it was for me. Directly. Because I struggled. I don't have it. I struggle because I want, want, want. And say, come here, And that's what your problem is. My wife said, you always want, want more. You just come You ain't never got enough. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And no, I don't. 
And sometimes growing up with not having a lot and then God bless you, then you think you got to get it all at one time and walk around and you got stuff and rocks. I got shoes I ain't never wore yet, but I got them. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. A fool and his money soon shall depart because I'm preaching it, but some of y'all couldn't tell. Y'all got stuff at home that you ain't never used, but you're going to use. And somebody in your circle needs it, but you ain't going to give it up because you might need it one day. Yeah. That's some crazy stuff. I might need this one day, and if I give it to them, they won't give it back. <laughs> the abundant life is therefore one in which you are content in the knowledge that God's grace is more than sufficient for your needs. Ooh, man, I'm telling you, and it's crazy, not your wants. And that's what happened to me. God has taken care of all my needs from the time I was in John Militia Valley till I came out to right now in 56. He's taken care of my needs. I had no clue to make up that my wants had messed me up, messed my marriage up, messed with my kids, messed with my church. My wants have messed up a whole family, friends, co-worker. Call this your wants. That nothing can suppress it and that God's favor towards you is unending. Ain't that some good news? Give God a hand clap. Give God, come on. Even when we messed it up. Even when we messed it up. He kept on throwing more grace on us. Now I understand what he's saying. My grace is sufficient. Because Donald, you needed a whole lot of grace. And every one of us can put your own name in there. All those years, like to hear elders say, I'm a grace case. Y'all sit around her, come on. Because the elder came through one of the most, I still say stuff about her, one of the best men guys ever brought through this little area. Amen? And he said, we're a grace case. We're all grace cases. We all just need more grace. And more grace. And more grace. And then look at this. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> to be made alive. Through the faith in Christ. And I wrote this because it was so personal. My birthday weekend, and I know God delivered me for I had my best one, made alive physically on October 7, 1967, to John and Alicia. But can you confirm when you was made alive spiritually in Christ? And brother, I keep telling you stuff when folk have been in church all my life, going through, got baptized at 13. But brother, if you can't start understanding when God came in and broke it, and we still got some broken in, but I know when he came in and broke me and molded me and shaped me. And brother, if you can't identify when you was made alive spiritually, then chances are you ain't been made alive. Because you got to start standing on it when God came in and officially stamped you. Not when you went in the water. Because I told you I went in at 13 and I came out. Boy, I devil too. But 32 is when I started seeing that he broke me. I thought it was that day, and y'all might remember this, when I lost my mind. At the old centennial, because I told you, I got to make this person you can see. And I was sitting there at the revival elder, and I all, all of a sudden, I was one of those that was skeptical folk. It don't take all that, running around, shouting and jumping and hopping and stuff like that. <laughs> and one day, <laughs> I'll never forget it, this pastor and elder one all of them, and I was just sitting there. And, and this is what's crazy. Elder one had told pastor, he said, something on that young man. By the time revival was over, I'm up, turned into Michael Jordan, shouting, jumping, trying to hit the ceiling. I'm ready. I got it now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going crazy. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at everybody else, and then I said, whoa, when the spirit hits and you made a lie, you ain't thinking about mama. You ain't thinking about nobody. You thinking about what God just done you. And what a struggle from the 
for it. Because when it falls on you, remember what I just read to the beginning. He's trying to kill you, destroy you. Amen? Amen. He's trying. He don't play fair. He's coming after you. He walks about to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Come on now. And before you know it, he got on you. You felt that you're strong. I'm past that stage in my life. I'm good to go. And all of a sudden, 10 years later, he creeps back around. So let's see what we can do about this. So how do we get to this contentment and abundant life in Christ? Now I told you last week we read Psalms 23 and we're going to read it again. And I had no clue. I told you for the first time really in my ministry where I'm just kind of just following God and really not trying to manipulate and do this. And man, it's been scary because I don't even know. And I've read Psalm 23 all my life too. But up until two weeks ago, it was a change for me of what it really means to be content and have the abundant life. Because brother, I don't want it if God didn't give it to me. And brother, there's a lot of stuff I got but without him. And that's why I couldn't hold on to it. And that's why I thought it was mine. And that's why I was angry, fussing, cussing, going all of it. But everything that God gives you is so smooth. You ain't worried about it. It free flows through your hands. Because when he gives it to you, you know it never runs out. But when you get it on your own and you hold on to it, you ain't sharing. But when God blesses you and God blows on you and you made a lot, you looking for fun. To bless you, looking for folks to love a home. You looking for folks to bring joy and peace to. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get there? I want to give you a couple of things. We're out of here. Number one, and it was crazy that my little baby girl Kalisha, who I'm always fussing with, comes and just like a daddy. The other two, like their mom, they fall in line. That other one, like me. Aggressive, gonna say what's on the mind, gonna tell you. Not even talk to her this week. And then she sent me that about rest. Because I said, you need to get your rest. What is keeping you from getting your daily rest? And but he just gave me some stuff. What's your fears? What's got you tensed up? What gets you? Come on. Aggravated. Come on. Hunger, the things in life you're hungry for. I'm not talking about no physical eating a piece of chicken. What are you hungry for? Why do you want more? You're not even done what I've given you on 40,000. Why do you want 400,000? To be more foolish? You've not handled the 40 right and you keep wanting more. Brother, I'm telling you what you're hungry. All this stuff gets in here and I can't get rest. I can't sleep. My mind's racing. I'm not content. And he's telling us in Psalm 23, which was crazy when I'm getting ready to get to. So how do we get here? How do I take the fear to the Lord and my tension and what aggravates me and what I'm hungry for? How do I just drop it off and trust that Lord knows what's best? But Donald Wayne Smith, and he's got my back. He knows that he's going to give it to me when I'm ready and able to receive it. And not try to go get it on my own. Where is guidance coming from? This is very essential for your overall welfare. Something guiding you. And there's not a person in here, whether it's me, Pastor Short, who was here, whoever, deacon, mom and daddy, grandparents, somebody guiding your thoughts. Somebody is shaping and molding you. And what I'm going to tell you is if I will send you pastors to court, and that's why I always tell you, hold your pastors accountable. But you don't hold them accountable to what you think, what you like, what other folk in the church. Hold them accountable to the Lord. And I've always preached this very clear. Hold them accountable. It's something that you don't like that I say. Go home. That's why when I told you, and folk to this day still talking about it. And I'm okay. I told you. I released some of y'all when I first came back. Come on now. Quit being a closet drinker. There's nothing wrong with drinking it unless it leads to drunkenness. See, the problem is I'm, I'm going to preach it clear to you and not put some stuff on you because he said if you can't refrain from getting drunk. Ain't nothing wrong with a little glass of wine. But if you got a problem, wine only when you're drinking a whole fifth. In 10 minutes, you got a problem. 
I'm telling you right now, if you drink the whole 15 10 minutes, you wine over. Now, if you can drink one a day and move on down the road, you're okay. The problem is, you don't even use the glass yet. <laughs> if, you, if you put your lips on the bottle, you got a problem. At least put a lip in the glass. It, it looks fun on TV. Let it shake. <sighs> you do this, you can't take nothing. <laughs> amen. I lied, amen, the way. Because I want the overall welfare. I made it sure that we got in your right and we understand. And that all this is coming out of Psalm 23. And I want to go through, give you these things, and then we're going to read it again together because that's what's going to help us, Deacon T. I didn't know why he was saying that. I'm reading Psalm 23 every day now because I want to be content. And I'm giving you rest instead of I'm giving you guidance in there. I'm giving you safety. See, all that's in there. I'm not reading it just to read it anymore. So, Lord, I want to be content in you. Amen. Not my wife, not my husband, not my children, not my job title, not my money. So all that is going to flee me. But I want to be content in you. Third, do you feel safe no matter what you are going through? Why or why not? Strong faith comes from having your faith tested. And brothers, I'm telling you, I told you, I shared, I had a little Miss Jocelyn, I preached like to make it plain. I got to see a whole different side and fell in love with Miss, because I always see Miss Jocelyn through Coach Johnson. My man it was crazy. I told you, 14 months. And I got to sit there and witness a whole lot of it. It's like, wow, and I was telling Dennis that I said, your mama's a bad lady. <laughs> to understand. And she's moving and she's pushing forward because of God. And then I had no clue the story that Pete saying all the way in Nashville. God is always in control. Amen. Patience comes from having lived through tough situations. And we some tough people. Man, we some tough people. And the thief knows he's got to come at us hard. That's why he's trying to do all three of them to you. He's got to come at you hard, because he knows that you're some tough people because you've been built tough in Christ. And brother, he's got to come. That don't mean he don't stop. He still comes through me. He still comes through. Well, he still comes through you too. He still comes through church. He still comes through. He's still coming, but he knows he got to really come because you have insulated yourself in Christ. You're dwelling with him now. And we're going to see how all this goes. Ah, uh, number four. Do you feel like your provisions are being met? Why? Why not? Understand the difference between needs and wants is the key here. Physical needs have always been met on his timeline, not yours. That's why when Dottie's people song came out all those years ago, the whole church, everybody feeling good and was rocking that song because he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but yet we can say that, but he's still on time, but it wasn't your time because it wasn't his time because he knows when to meet your come on. I gave it to you too early to run through you. Right. So I knew that this time, I'm going to give it to you. And man, I said, I'm feeling so good with what God is doing in the new movement because I love God and love others and keep it moving. Amen? Amen. Love doesn't start fights. Love don't try. Love just moves. It keeps it moving. It, love is a bad thing. Love covers a multitude of things. Come on, it covers it. Where are you preparing to dwell for the rest of your life now and forever? Do you even think about your destiny? That just kind of messed me up. So 
Some people just go half-heartedly, okay, I'm just living this your life, just do whatever you want to do, just enjoy your life. And I'm like, no, I retain, I want to have life and life more abundantly. I want the joy, I want the peace, I want the love, I want it all right here. Why am I waiting to get it in heaven when I can have a piece of heaven down here? Because the piece of heaven down here is what God I know I went fast. Did you get all of my notes down before we <laughs> close out? Did y'all get them? You did? Go back to what? I'm, I, I'm different. I'm okay. We're okay. What do you want me to go back to? The, okay. Get it. I, I don't want you to walk out of here just feeling good. Oh, he said a couple of good things. Write it down. I talk faster than you write. So God gave us technology with some bad technology, folks. Now you can walk out of here and you can't put it just on me because you can write it down and go home and understand the difference, baby. And I struggle with that. God, dog, the difference, the difference, the difference. I've made my wants needs. And it'll cost you. Yeah. It'll cost you some stuff. It'll make you buy stuff and waste money and do stuff that you know you don't need. You just say, well, I can't because I can afford it. I got it. And there's somebody else in God's family that needs some help. And we're supposed to help them. But we got all this stuff over here wasted where there's some folk that need some help. Ouch. Ouch. And they don't need help on your terms. They need help on God's terms. Because when it's your turn, then you think it's your money and it's your time and you do it when you want to do it. No, baby, if God blessed you with it and gave it to you, then you should be made available to be a sacrifice when they come your way. Amen, somebody. Whether you agree or not, just say amen and you'll get it later. Because some of us ain't there yet. I'm telling you, it takes you a while to get there to understand that it's not sure that this is all God. It belongs to him and he's blessed you to be a blessing to so many folk that come in and out of your life. Amen. So everybody got them? Amen. 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 